Goodwood Revival Weekend of 2023. The signal is given and we're getting ready to go racing. The Sussex Trophy is underway and it's all free at the front, but actually Roger Wills, I would say, makes a better start from the outside of the front row. But will he be able to get into the front? Yes. Yes, he does. Roger does get in front of the Ferrari of Sam Hancock and actually it's not worked out at all for Ollie Bryant. He's down to fourth. Molly Bright initially got a really good getaway, that initial one, and then just seemed to have some wheel spin. Ah, they've got the number 14 car off. That's Matt Green has gone off there early on. But yeah, he got a little bit of wheel spin. We saw the tyre smoke, but everyone else further behind, albeit Matt Green, have uh, come through nice and safely. Some beautiful Jaguar D-types out there, a bit further down the grid as well. As you say, though, that uh, little wet patches in a few places are still making life a touch tricky, but that was a brilliant start by Roger Wills, and he is just trying to open up that gap. They're all learning, though. They've all got to learn where's the dry bit, where's the wet bit. Now, I wonder if we shall have a safety car quite early on, Ben, because Matt's car is actually just after the start-finish line, and I can still see it parked sideways on the grass. Yellow flags are waving. There you go now. I don't... That's had some uh, heavy impact, so let's have a little look. So I'm guessing someone's going to get slow away. Uh, and no, no, there we go. So ooh, he's just lost the rear of the car there, unfortunately, and spun around. I'll have to see who he ended up hitting there. But a great job from everybody else, else sorry, to avoid him. And safety car is now out. Oh, do feel for him. That's uh, always an embarrassing one, but it's so easily done when you do a, a standing start that you get that extra bit of wheel spin than you were expecting, and it just turns the car off. I had that once, I remember well. And uh, very embarrassing. 77 has also got off into the gravel trap. That's another of the Lotus 15s. That's uh, Massimo Bittati, and they, he's very stuck. So this actually, yeah, safety car period for both now, because they're going to have to give him a tow to get him out. Yeah, and you can see the marshals down there are making sure that all cars move over to the right-hand side of the track. And uh, that is pretty damaged there on the front, isn't it? So they're going to have to get something to uh, a flatbed maybe to pick that car up. I'll tell you what, the biggest gain on that opening lap was from Gary Pearson. He started in 16th place. He has made seven places. He's gone up to eight positions. So he's in the number 70 Jaguar D-type. What a start that must have been. Or he was just in the right place at the right time. I don't know quite what happened. Well, he'll say it was just a great start. <laughs> But uh, impressive that he's gone from 16th place to 8th position. Um, still waiting for the marshals to get clear to be able to come back out and try and move the car, if that is the plan. I would think they will be trying to. Um, just looking down there now with this under the safety car period. And there is the number 70 car I mentioned. It is Gary Pearson, so that was a brilliant start in this very beautiful Jaguar D-Type. It was a works car, this one. Um, that would have raced it, actually retired, unfortunately, at uh, Le Mans in 1955. And uh, it was raced by Mike Hawthorne, partially, by Briggs Cunningham as well. I think it moved over to the, uh, the USA to race. And the, the D-Type has such a distinctive style about it, and particularly the section behind the, the driver's head. Yeah, it does, and it's back out of retirement now in the Sussex Trophy here at Goodwood Revival. And I love the fact that he's kept in theme there with the the goggles on really keeping to to the age of the car yeah yeah it looks splendid and that was a brilliant first lap however it worked we didn't quite see because there was that incident maybe he was just on the correct side of the grid but he off, got off the line well tiffany dell enjoying himself he's in seventh place actually he didn't gain or lose he's one of the few who actually either didn't lose places and didn't gain either ollie bryant was one of the ones that lost more of course he lost two places off pole position so ollie bryant still going around in third gary there gained the most i don't think anybody else get oh no somebody further down gained nine who's that number 44 that's jason wright so oh yes i did see the ferrari 246 further up than i expected because that started right at the back so i think they may have had a mechanical problem with the number 44 ferrari in qualifying and it ended up at the back and actually he's made um, a good start and made nine places that puts him into 19th you see it the ferrari there in the back of that little group always a distinctive color and we'll see if he can make more yeah didn't actually set a lap time in qualifying so certainly had an issue and that's not hindered missing out on track time at all because they haven't had any extra free practices they did they have had the the qualifying and then into the race so uh, a really great job there
down at the back, Conrad Ulrich, that's one of the Maseratis. We've only got a couple of Maseratis in this today, the 300 SL, a car that raced in uh, USA a lot. Apparently it had a, an accident at Sebring in 56, was rebuilt, and then that poor thing had another accident, that car, in Sebring in 1959. And then it was rebuilt, it was uh, not used a lot for a while, but it came back to the UK and then it uh, was restored in the 1990s, that car down towards the back of the field. And uh, there we are, there's the number 44 car that has made nine places. Coming from the back, having not set a time earlier on in qualifying, Jason Wright in a very distinctive Ferrari 246. And we'll see how it goes in the next part of the race. Of course, when they do get going again, they will all be very close to one another. Now, whether they are sending uh, the truck down there to pick that car up, or they may decide to leave it, I suppose. They're definitely going to get the car out of the gravel. I think there is a tow truck on the way, so we will, yeah. yes, I can see it coming past us now. It'd be uh, probably a bit too dangerous, wouldn't it, to, to maybe leave it there. So it's uh, pretty damaged, as I said. Oh, we've got the 77 car. He's out. He's out. That's with the gravel. They must He's out of the gravel. Oh, no. It's a, that's what I mean about when you can't get out of the gravel. And uh, he's uh, now spread that all over the track. But there we go. You can still see it's continuing to deposit a line of gravel all the way around. And when he hits the brakes further up the track into Woodcut Corner, he's going to hear it all slide forward. And uh, oh, that's not going to make the noise. Noise. You're absolutely right. The noise that must be going on in the car right now is this clattering, clattering. And you feel so guilty, don't you? Yeah, you do the car being bashed by all these little stones but I'm so glad they've got it out so there you are the marshals are going to move that other car out and do show for him uh, it just didn't work getting off the line went a bit wrong still trucking the gravel out uh, on the track as he goes through the chicane let's have a look I guess he'll come into the pits there we go shower of gravel oh, no he carries on fair yeah. enough fair enough the car is not actually damaged um, he's putting a lot of gravel down there as you say because it's still falling out he's done over a third of a lap here around the Goodwood circuit already, and he's still dropping more gravel. So if anyone gets a stone chip on their helmet throughout the race, I think they know who they're going to come to uh, for for the, the damage on the helmet. Yeah, well, it's probably just as well he's doing this without being followed by other cars under safety car, because, as you say, they would be being splattered. But at least by the time he catches them and he's with other cars, it might be clear. Yeah, exactly. So uh, there we go. It almost looks like a... It's more of flies or bees, doesn't it, showering behind the car, but I promise you, it's not, it is gravel. Yeah, so uh, that's Massimo Bettati in his Lotus Climax, Lotus 15. He's hopefully going to join the back of the queue again. Uh, we're still waiting for the car on the start finish straight to be uh, moved out of the way. There it is. They are working on it, getting sorted, and uh, it will be out of the way pretty soon to so Matt Green it was who had that uh, mishap at the start unfortunately and they will be able to get it out of the way and we'll get the racing to, to go uh, they're still going it's still going that's a lot I mean the gravel's pretty deep there we've, we've seen some, some of the other races how difficult it is to get out so some very strong marshals down there on that post to, to push the car out unless it did get a, a helping hand with a, a bit of a toe and has uh, finally now he's come round and caught the back of the pad of course and put team on that down yeah so yes got to the back of the group as you say um but matt green's car well, it's actually the, the uh, entrance of matt green's car richard Locke. He, he acquired the car this year so he'll be richard will be a little sad that it hasn't got uh, a bit further into the race i'm sure but it'll it'll happen again it's done lots of racing here at the historic goodwood events in the past and i'm sure it'll be back many times too so the drivers are all seeing that they're not going to be clear just yet so they can just take it easy behind the safety car safety car is actually taking them very slowly understandably at this section and it's because they're going past the car that's being picked up so they have to go at a very slow speed yes they are you can see they're all keeping to the right hand side of the track making sure that uh, they're slowing slowly going past the incident but a great shot there the marshals of course making sure that they stick to the right hand side and you probably think well isn't that a bit obvious but if you happen to be looking down and not fully concentrating obviously there's not loads of controls in these cars but they are very old cars so if you do need to make a, an adjustment of some kind before you know it you can be uh, causing uh, another accident so that's why the marshals are there are just redirecting the traffic 
Again, uh, swinging around Harvey Stanley in the number six guy. He seems to love doing that in that Tajero Jaguar. Uh, chucks it around, trying to get a bit of temperature into the tyres, presumably. That's part and parcel of it. Number 22 car there. That's an unusual car. That's a Sadler Chevrolet. Uh, Julian Madrum is, is driving it. It's a Mark II with the 4.9 Chevy engine in it, so it's got a big amount of power. But it is, uh, yeah, it was quite a rare car in period. It raced here at Goodwood in 1957. It was built by Bill Sadler, raced by him as well. There you are, there it is again, the number 22 car. So very rare, um, built and raced by Bill Sadler here at Goodwood as well. And it was one of the first, I think it, it was one of the very first sports cars made with a Chevy engine, actually. Uh, so that started a whole new idea, didn't it? It did, and Julian is a very, very experienced driver around here at Goodwood. If any of you were here for the members' meeting and that really close finish in the SF Edge Trophy where he finished second, but he he was fighting for the lead through a lot of it and he was all wheeling his car on across the line and it was a really great race. So Julian will help to move a little bit further up the, the field here. Start sitting down at the moment, sorry, in 14th place. Lights still on the safety car at the moment, and we can still see from our com box they haven't quite got that car out of the way, so I think it's going to be at least another lap. The truck's moving. Oh, right, okay. We've seen, haven't we? The lights go out pretty late on the safety car. I'm just having a look at where the truck's going to go now. I think we will. Well, it's gone on the grass, so maybe there's a pull in point for it somewhere further up around the first corner, but I think, unfortunately, Ben, we. Uh, we might have to... Oh, no, I'm just being told the lights are out. So so there we go. They're just yep. as keen as we are to get back underway. That was a quick decision, but it's great to see. And so Roger Wills, who made such a great start earlier, he's now going to have massive pressure from Sam Hancock behind him. We're getting ready to go racing once again. It's Roger, who has control until the start-finish line. He'll nail the throttle coming out of the chicane. He does it. They're all sliding a little bit onto the line, but he's got away well, and that was a big slide for Sam Hancock. Big slide and plenty of uh, slides going on further down the field. We have had three extra minutes added on to this race, but that was a really difficult start for Wills there because it was such a late call for the safety car to come in. He couldn't plan uh, way in a sort of way. You always plan in advance, but it was a late. He couldn't get a, a good run. He had to basically wait to the chicane. A lot of them are snapping sideways on the exit of Magic. I don't know whether it's water or oil down there because they're all having a bit of a... A, a rear snap or gravel, yeah, perhaps. Um, who knows? But uh, they had the most of them, I think, have survived it. They've all corrected it well. And uh, Roger done a good job with the restart there. Sam Hancock chasing him, but they're both under pressure now from Ollie Bryant. So he has got third place now, who was on pole. And I think he'll still be a threat to them as with this continues. Down into Levant they come and onto the long straight. Yeah, this uh, this is going to be a good good scrap. Ollie Bryant knows he had the pace, was really fast in qualifying. Actually, it was on the very last lap that he popped in uh, a super quick time of 124.3. So they've still got obviously a long way to go uh, before they get to that pace. But he's right on the back of Hancock now. Harrison Newey in the number three car. He's putting a little bit of pressure on uh, Harvey Stanley just ahead of him. But meanwhile, we've got Sam Hancock in this beautiful Ferrari trying to get a little closer to the white Lotus of Roger Wills. But Roger's holding on to that lead very effectively. That car is working beautifully. He goes into the chicane on a slightly narrower line, interestingly. Behind the boat, though, Holly Bryan. He was the fastest in qualifying by a wider margin. You can still see how slippery it is in places. And in fact, he made a mistake there, I think, by getting on the wet patch. Yeah, he's, he's struggling, isn't he, there? Right, he's not having much luck with driving vehicles in a straight line, is he? He was all over the shop with the Cobra. Not Nothing to do with him. It's just they were so powerful. It was hard to keep in the straight line in tricky conditions. But look now, Hancock has streamed all the way up to back of Wills. That gap was certainly was six tenths of a second when they crossed the line, but that is definitely decreased a hell of a lot now and he's having a little look as they go down the straight into St Mary's this is great stuff isn't it and I tell you what that lap was slower than I expected there's some 16 seconds off what they did in the dry and as you say side by side a real attempt there by Sam Hancock and now he's got the inside line going into Levant yes but he's done it he's gone round the outside of the second part of St Mary's a really great move can Wills have a little look back down the inside
side. No, he doesn't, but there's a very long straight coming up. But already, Bryant is right on the back of them. Yeah, so Ollie's got back into third place, hasn't he? Having lost that place to Miles Griffiths when they were going over the line, just coming out of the chicane. But now it is Sam Hancock. And I tell you, this track is drying up. That last lap was only a 140.7 when they did 124s, 125s in dry qualifying. So it just indicates, even though they're not sliding as much as the big, powerful sports cars we saw earlier, clearly the track is still quite slippery. I think the next couple of lap times are going to start dropping down because it is improving. Yeah, well, it still feels like he needs to do that to narrow a line, doesn't he? As we can still see the gravel left there, but look at them snaking all over the place, down the straight, still driving on ice, many of the drivers said on some of the earlier races. As Bryant means business now, he's turned on those headlights, and that usually means I'm hunting you down, I'm coming through. Absolutely right. That was a 138.4 from Sam Hancock, so that was a good lap. Uh, the track is drying up a bit. Ollie needs to get on with this if he's going to have a chance to catch the Ferrari. And he's beginning to hunt around the back of Roger Wills. Where's the opportunity going to come? They've both got the same engines, of course. They're both the Lotus 15. So their speeds, both in corners and straight lines, are pretty similar. Yeah, they are looking at the sectors now. Hancock has certainly pulled a good gap Whoa. as Brian goes around the outside again. Wills has been done around the outside of St Mary's part two. Really brave stuff. But Bright knows he's got to get past, and he's under pressure now from Miles Griffiths. On the inside, don't make contact, guys. No, they keep it nice and clean, so he's going to have to have a good go now coming down the, the back straight, heading into Woodgut Corner, but a great move from Bryant. Yeah, very good indeed. But, uh, yeah, Miles Griffiths also trying to make that move as well. Roger Wells having to give up that place, so that's dropped Roger down into third position. Looking just uh, at some of the other attacks that are going on. That's James Thorpe in that lovely Lister Jaguar flat iron. Uh, he's a bit further down. He's down in 10th position. He just lost a place, in fact, to Nick Fernborough in a Cooper Monaco. The 114. And they're having their own little battle. Meanwhile, look, you are seeing the leaders get closer and closer to one another. Sam Hancock in the Ferrari. Journey just ahead of Ollie Bryant in the Lotus. And then the other Lotus of Roger Wills coming under more pressure again from Miles Griffiths in another version of the Lotus 15. So they've got similar performance as well. And then Harvey Stanley just a little bit further back. As that lap by 136, they gain another two seconds on that lap. The track is drying, but it's still tricky. It's still tricky. It's still a long way off from what they were doing in qualifying. As now, having a look at the sector times, they're pretty even, uh, Bryant and Hancock at the moment through the first sector. But it does seem this second and third sector where Ollie Bryant seems to have the legs on the rest of the field. Yeah, let's watch him here. Is he? Uh, interestingly, he takes the wide line. Often this is a good plan. You don't necessarily want to go on down on the inside into the van, otherwise it slows you on the straight. Meanwhile, similar sort of approach. He's going to get the cut back, does he? He's going to be ever so close. No, not quite close enough. No, that's right. That straight line speed of the Ferrari looks good, doesn't it? Because we saw how close they were going to Levant, but I think the Ferrari has just that little bit more straight line speed, and that's suiting sound. It's a bigger engine. It's a 2.4 versus the 2-litre engine in the Lotus. Yeah, now, traffic, Ben. Traffic. Here is some traffic for these drivers to deal with. Not only these tricky conditions, and I was just about to say how it can really affect the leaders and effect position and it is look oh. Hancock's having to really slow down in the chicane as the drivers desperate they're having their own race the blue flags will be out but it's hard to really pull over especially in that, that chicane that's so narrow so this will play a big part now uh, with these lead track drivers and with this lead pack as to who can find themselves through the traffic the best and also a little bit I've come down to a little bit of luck of how you uh, arrive to the back of the track. Right, another opportunity perhaps as they come through Ford Water. This is flat out through here as long as the track is dry enough. And then, oh, and then we've got a problem for the number 22 car of Julian Madrid that we were talking about earlier. Whether he's just had, I think he's just had a little off, maybe just ran onto the grass. Back with the battle for the lead though. And still not quite the opportunity for Ollie Bryant. And if he can't get past on this section, he's trying though. He's got an opportunity. He's going for it. Ollie goes into the lead. Ollie Bryant into the lead. But we're coming down to a section where the Ferrari is so quick, it might be able to come back. He did that well, didn't he? He did that really well. And he knows I've got to get a good exit out of the 
man corner to really get the hammer down and stream down the straight. Let's have a little look. The Ferrari's closing the gap ever so slightly, but Brian has done a great job in the lesser powered car there as he comes into Woodcut now and he stamps on the brake. The car will be squirming underneath him. You can just see a dry line there starting to form now, Ben, as Brian comes round into the chicane and he's going to have a, a good gap. Right, let's have a look at what went wrong for Julian. So he was making a move down the inside, and I think then, yeah, he ran wide as part of that move. Yeah, once he uh, got on the grass, yeah, I think that was it. He was always going to end up spinning around. Doesn't matter how much talent you had in car control, he was always been go be going round on the slippy grass. Dealt with it well, though. He let it go. He, leaves, he was looking around, making sure it was clear. And then this was the change for the lead. Yeah, and they're really nicely done and really nicely timed as well. And even though Ollie Bryant was overtaking, he has set fastest lap of the race. But I don't think it will be over yet because, as I said earlier, the traffic will play a part and uh, the spread of the field compared to sort of the back of the field, the times that they're doing to, to those at the front, uh, is quite a big spread. So um, if Ollie's just going to hope that his luck uh, is going to swing in his favour, and he's going to approach the traffic and be able to uh, to get past quite easily. Further down the order, some separate little battles going on. There's Tiffany Dell, number 88, running in seventh place. And uh, part of the little group behind there is number 70, and that's Gary Pearson. He's actually the next one in there in that particular group. There are, as you say, some cars being lapped in this group as well. Tiffany Dell. Just finding a way past nicely. Gary now trying to do the same. Ooh, that's a little bit tight. Very tight. Was uh, pretty tight there. But they just managed a kick of the on the grass there. And, uh, <laughs> I think I was all that friendly hand gestures going on. Yes, I think he felt that. You know, keep an eye out because I was coming through and he is laughing. It's not like he's racing against him for position. Jeffrey O'Neill, that is, in the Maserati, who just tightened it in a little bit too much. There's Gary Pearson in the. Stunning D-type, and uh, that is now running in eighth position, chasing after Tiffany Dell. Uh, but coming under pressure now from Nick Fernborough, that number 114 car is pretty close, and Nick is definitely putting a bit of pressure on him. That's in the Cooper Climax T49 Monaco, raced by Jackie Epstein in its early years, and he goes through. Good speed. Yeah, real uh, good exit there from the 114. As you can see, his belt's flapping around there, so... They are, he is strapped in, he's strapped in nice and tight. It's just the end of the belts that you pull to, to strap the driver in, floating about there. But the gap at the lead now, Ben, is 1.4 seconds between Bright and Hancock, but there's been a mixture of, of sector times, uh, and that will be down to the traffic. Someone who is setting some, some good pace is Harvey Stanley in the, the number six car, down in sixth in the... Jaguar, that was actually, this car won, I believe, yeah, last you're year. Right. Yeah, with James Cottingham. James Cottingham, who's uh, not driving it this year. He's given it to Harvey Stanley to have a go, and it's just looking pretty fast. Yeah, it is looking good, um, and he's having fun out there, Harvey. But our race leader, number one, and he's in position one, and he's comfortable with it, as you said. He's opened it up. Let's see what the gap is this time. It was 1.4 seconds when he last crossed the line. He's done another better lap, and it's gone up to 2.9 now, so he's easing away. Battle for third going on just behind, though. Roger Will still under pressure from Miles Griffiths. There's not much between the white and orange Lotus in the battle for the final podium position, and actually, they're not far away from Sam Hancock. No, they're not. Wills has really found a, a turn of pace here in these drying conditions. He's just set the fastest lap of the race, a 132.2. They weren't doing in qualifying, though, 124, so the track's still got a long way to go, so I think we've got a really, really good scrap on our hands here. Ben, for this uh, second podium spot as Griffiths is having a little look there on the back of Wills. Yeah, he had, as you say, almost pushed down alongside but decided to back out of it. Now he's looking for the good exit here. Both of them have got an advantage to get a bit of a toe off the Ferrari. But whether Miles Griffiths in the orange car can get a little bit more straight line speed here and then attack on the way down to Woodcut. I don't think he will, but the car of Roger Wills, he's got a good motor. It's pulling away. He's got the toe from the Ferrari, and it's working for him. Yeah, it certainly is working for him. 
going down the straight. The gap at the top has opened up even more. 2.9 seconds now. This is very, very good on the brakes there into Wooker Corner. Still taking that tighter line. He feels that is the best way for him to navigate uh, the entry into the chicane. As they're full chat now down the straight. Some of them finding the slightly wetter patches to maybe uh, pull the tyres, treaded tyres, so they uh, won't be slick tyre. But still, I feel that uh, Tiny's pulling down a little bit. Stanley, new fastest lap at 130.8. Yes. So it won't be long. And there you go. You can see him in the background in the number six. So it's not long before he's going to be joining this battle for the second place. There you are. You're watching him now, as you say, just set fastest lap and really beginning to go at good speed as they are again lapping some other cars. So this could give opportunities for a change for second place. Up front, Ollie Bryant in a very comfortable position, and Tiffany Dell involved in another battle with Nick Finborough, who goes through. So Nick has now put himself up to seventh place. Tiff is down into eighth position, and Nick Finborough is really uh, charging along well in number 114, Cooper Climax T49 Monaco. And this car was restored relatively recently, it made its debut at Donington in May last year. And I tell you what, they've restored it extremely effectively. There's the battle for second position still going on. We've got under two minutes to go, and there's a good clear area for the race leader, but the other podium positions are still oh, uncertain, aren't they? Look they at this. are, and it has got box there by a bit of traffic, yeah, but he's dealt with it really, really well, covered off the tight line. He saw Miles Griffiths coming in the bright orange number 37. But uh, that's now open to give that Hancock a little bit of breathing space. And you can see in the background there, Stanley really getting the rear of his, his car out and getting it loose of the Jaguar as he desperately tries to, to close the gap. And it's now Hancock that has set fast snap off the race. And the yeah. gap has gone from 2.9 for the lead down to 1.6. Yeah, I think Ollie Bryant's kind of taking it steady a little bit and trying to protect the car, but you're right, he's not going as quick as he was earlier, whereas this lot, which are right, they're all racing so hard, they're pushing, 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 and Sam Hancock has managed to ease away a bit now from the two Lotuses. Yeah, and there you can see the Ferrari has got Bryant in his sight, but in Bryant's sight, further down the road, that looked like a lot of traffic. Right. Oh, this is a good move by Miles Griffiths. He's nipped past. He could be getting the podium after all. He's up in the third place. Roger Wells is going to have to fight back. He is, and he's going to have a good go coming down the back straight. He's going to try and dummy, send it one way, have a look at the other. But he's being forced to go the long way round as they'll come heavy into the brakes, into Woodcook Corner. Now, Miles Griffiths, does he get it stopped? Oh, he cut a lovely <laughs> job by Miles Griffiths. Really covers off the line. Almost invited wheels down the inside. But look at this traffic. Yeah, it's tight. Sam's now got to be caught up in it. Sam Hancock. So that might actually give Ollie Bryant a slightly bigger advantage as they go over the line once again. They will be uh, seeing the chequered flag next time around. Gap up, up to 2.4, but there's the third place man, Miles Griffiths, still with Roger Wills chasing him for third place. It looks like first and second might be sorted as we're on the final lap, but third is still to fight for. So it is still to fight for, and it will hang up. A big shame for him. He really could get hampered by the traffic as the number 29 of David Porter has spun around somewhere on the circuit, safely rejoins, and same with the number 61 of Jeffrey O'Neill. Yeah, he's getting back on the tarmac. And uh, whether that was something between them, because there was a I bit of a... I'm glad we had the graphic there, because I can't see if that was a friendly they've, graphic. They've caught Sam Hancock again. I think he must have got caught in traffic or something, because suddenly now, Miles Griffiths in the orange Lotus is putting the pressure on the Ferrari. I think the Ferrari will have to pace on this section, though. We are on the last lap. Yeah, we certainly are. I think Brian going to commentate his curtis, but I think he's pretty safe for the win, but it's not over down here. So you can see the Ferrari just, as you said, Ben, has that pace down the straight. So has that saved Hancock? He's a little bit earlier on the brakes. He gets it stopped. Is Miles going to have a little lunge down the inside? But here is our winner. Yeah, Holly Bryant's done a super job. Pole position, he didn't get off the line well, but he's delivered in the race itself. Holly Bryant takes the victory in the Sussex Trophy in the Lotus Climax 15. Second does go to Sam Hancock by a tiny margin in the end. Miles Griffiths.
got that third place. He started fourth, but he beat Roger Wills in the end. Those two had a, a tremendous tussle. And Harvey Stanley, he ends up outside the podium, but he still ends up with fastest lap, the 129.9. He did a good job, finished in fifth place. Uh, some other battles still just being sorted out.